Ooh bop jim ba drop ba do bop dibby do da do da ba dee ba da ba boo. Do you remember them? Handsome. You think I'm you say I'm handsome? Yeah. I'm handsome. Alright, guys. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. It is my wife's uh, reaction to uh, Lizzo um, being Lizzo. And we have a little bit of updated information in case people missed like my video. Uh, maybe I'll put it in the description. Whatever. Who cares? This is the Robin Dan. I'm a little curious about what you think about this. Um, I'm going to leave the Patreons on. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Cool. Share. We share. We share. All right. So there's a lawsuit of Lizzo, and they, I, in my opinion, they're using the the meanest looking pictures of her. There's one where you have something up where it's one, two, three, and that um, third. Here we are being mean again. What's happening here? Why is it not like? Phenomenal. Okay. Oh, what is happening? Um, well, that works, but then your audio is not working. Okay, Mine there. isn't. Okay, we're good. Sorry, little weird picture. Anyway, I feel like this is a mean picture. What were you saying? I didn't say anything. Oh, you were saying that. This is, I just feel like this is like a mean, I don't know. It's just, this is just, it's not like their outfit necessarily, although it's like a pomegranate. But my, it's more of like the still that they got. You know what I mean? They picked it at the right, like the worst time. Yeah. That's like if they picked a, a shot of me, like have it like doing like a tick, and then somebody screenshot that, and I look like this. You know. So anyway, she's getting sued for a few different things by former dancers who are accusing her that she's kind of a meanie head. And so we, I've already read through this, and so like I'm just gonna kind of give you like paraphrase it a little more. We don't have to go through all the specifics. The first thing though comes down to the first one is this: it's answer Tam club accusations. Okay. So basically, um, they were on. They were. They went to a club in Amsterdam. Lizzo, I believe, took everybody out for free. By the way, that's pretty. That's pretty poggers, in my opinion. That's kind of cool. Uh, it states that Lizzo's uh, after parties were routine, non-mandatory, so they weren't mandatory. But the allegations of the, those who attended were favored by the singer and had great job security. I feel like you have to prove that pretty heavily. Yeah. You have to like prove that. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's possible. You know? I don't know. My initial reaction to that is like, that makes sense. Why is it a bad thing? What? That you have to go or what? No, that those who attended were favored by the singer and had greater job security. Yeah, the employees that I spend more time with and hang out with and like more, I'm more likely to keep them on than people that I don't. You mean you personally or you in the context that you're a content creator that like has this type of... Me anywhere. Really? Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah, why? Like you're more likely to, to fire somebody if they don't hang out with you? I'm less likely to have like personal connection... To a person that would allow me to advocate more on their behalf. But someone that, like, I don't... But that, that you don't understand that there could be a big problem with you having, like, more likely to fire somebody if you're not their friend? Like, if you're running a business and you're gonna, you're gonna... I'm like, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. As long as you're upholding... Whatever. Like, if somebody like, is, like, your friend and they suck at their position, that's one thing. Yeah. But if you're friendly and somebody's upholding their position, like, whatever. Are you trying to say that if you have two people that are equally good at a job but you like one more, you're more likely to keep the one that you like? Yeah. Oh, well, that's the, I, I understand that. But I mean, fundamentally, what they're claiming is that if they didn't go to the party with them, that they were a higher chance for getting like on the chopping block. Yeah, and that's the same thing I just said. You think that's like okay? That's fair. 
Well, my initial reaction is going to be that this is inflated. Like, well, oh. yeah, of course. It's and, like a, it's the person a that didn't go to the party, I hear it as like, like spending time hanging out more. I mean, if, yeah. I mean, she probably liked the people that she was spending more time with. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't think that anybody should be should be mandatory to have to go to something that's out like non work related in order for them to maintain some kind of level of job security, because that pressures them to feel like they have to do something that they may not want to do. Okay. And that's like a problem. I can see why she might like them more, but they would have to substantiate this claim. And of course, it's it's a lawsuit, so they're going to exaggerate the claim. Um. Anyway, at the club, Lizzo allegedly began inviting cast members to make take turns touching the nude performers, catching dildos launched from the performers' vaginas, and eating bananas protruding from the performers' vaginas, the suit says. Lizzo then turned the attention to Miss Davis and began pressuring Miss Davis to touch the breasts of one of the nude women. So uh, then it goes on to say, actually... Uh, she declined, according to the suit, and Lizzo Leslie led a chant, goading her to do it. After Davis declined three more times, the chant grew louder and more student, demanding a visibly uncomfortable Miss Davis to engage, uh, engage with the performer. And then afterwards, uh, they laughed at her, basically. <laughs> Lizzo allegedly pressed a member of her security staff to get on stage and begin yelling, take it off, according to the suit. First of all, if I, was, I, I when you say pressured the security staff to get on stage, if I was like at a club and I was security for Lizzo and I was a little drunk because you know they're all drunk and they were like, and she's like, get on stage and dance, I would do it. I mean, when you say pressured, like, did they feel pressured or did she just say, yo, you should do this? And he's like, all right, fuck it. You know, so that's the end part of the sensationalization. Um, you know, it's one of the issues of mixing work and pleasure. Like, you should probably maintain that boundary just in case, really, for the safety of yourself more than anything else. Um, but again, they'd have to they'd have to prove that there was going to be able to be some kind of like, you know, backlash from that. Um I guess a week later they brought it to another club. Oh, they brought the she brought people to another club to be inspired by their performance, and it was like a cabaret, I guess. So they had their boobs were out, uh, and people said they were made to feel uncomfortable. But there's no allegations that like she forced them to do anything else other than like well, they went to the bar. She didn't have anybody touch their boobs or anything. It was just like a it was just a cabaret performance f- f- bar. They just walked around naked, I guess. Yeah, I, that's, I don't really care about that. Just leave. Uh, then there's a racial harassment claim. What do you think? <laughs> they were asking for fifty percent of I, for some. I don't know what this means, but apparently uh, there are, there, there's downtime performances, so they only would, they don't get paid. So they're asking for fifty percent of their normal pay. Um, and they they told them that they were disrespectful, and they only gave them twenty five percent. And they said that it was racist because they didn't want to give them a fifty percent. Okay, you want to just move on from the segment? You don't seem to be into it. I'm waiting for you to, like... That's it. Like, there's I nothing, don't know. There's, there's nothing really there. I don't know. Uh, only the, the, only the dance, cast comp- uh, dance cast comprised of full-figured women of color were ever spoken to in this manner. Like, do you think that that's actually racist? Were there other people in oh. the dance cast no. that were not spoken to that way? No, they were all black women, overweight black women, because that's what that Lizzo hired as their dance cast, which, I mean, that's racist to not hire an overweight, fat white man, if you ask me. You know what I mean? I mean, who's the real racist, Lizzo? But they're claiming because they asked for 50% of their pay on a downtime rate, and they only got 25%, and they were told they were being un- uh, disrespectful, that that was somehow racist and, I mean, I think even hinted at fat phobic. My question is, like, did you sign this contract before? Well, my... Like, did you get the job and then sign your contracts later? Because that's your fault. We, and... <laughs> I know, like, I, now I see what you're saying. Like, they, like they what are you getting paid for? for like on your uptime like how much money are you getting for that and during your downtime like what is your expectation like during your downtime are you able to which i'm assuming downtime is between shows during that time are you able to return home and do whatever probably not or are you like stuck with where you're at and what are your expectations do you have rehearsal like, what are you doing? I see what you're saying, especially about the didn't you already talk about this in the contract? Because I imagine they already were getting 25%. And then they asked for 50 and like then this happened in some capacity. My thing is, is that how would you say that this is fatphobic or racist? 
because they're fat and black. That's the thing. Is it just like so is Lizzo? I just I mean like sure she could be internally fat phobic and a racist, but I just feel like it's it. I feel like the lawyer said let's play the race and the fat angle, which is smart for the lawyer. But that's what lawyers do. They sensationalize to get away with as much as possible. Like you're supposed to um, start. And go as, like, as, as far to your perspective as possible. And the other person goes as far away from that. And you meet in the middle somewhere. Yeah. Um, um, uh, I don't think we're putting enough thought into why these dancers come out with these claims. If it means that they'd be blacklisted in the industry. I don't think that I... I don't. I mean, like maybe they are. Well, that argument's there is that because they might have blacklisted their careers, that that's like an argument to the validity. Or maybe they were not good at their jobs, or they, <clears throat> and so they decided to just burn the bridge and they're going to go away from dancing. Dancing is an incredibly highly competitive field already, right? I would imagine that's incredibly demanding. I imagine it might be a little more stressful for people that are overweight. Um, because like dancing can be a lot, um, and I feel like it's hard. It's 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 already hard to become a dancer. But on top of that, becoming like an overweight dancer, I feel like that's there, how many jobs are there for overweight dancers outside of like Lizzo and a strip club. So it's possible to me that they just got fired, and there's nowhere else that they could already go. Like I mean, maybe they got blacklisted, but this is all speculative. I think that they're upset because the relationship. I mean, like. This is it's it sounds like a very difficult field in the first place and the stressors then the fundamental stressors of being in a highly competitive field just possibly just made them upset and they decided to do a lawsuit on it. But this is like a fucking dance field. Like I mean it's not this isn't like a McDonald's. This is a dance field. It's high, like there's probably fucking like, you know for every one fat like dance role, fat dancer there's probably a hundred people ready to replace you. So everything you do you're walking on eggshells. There's the way, that's just how it is. Don't go into competitive field if you don't want to. They could have done something else. They decided to be dancers. Like okay, like I'm not particularly empathetic to the fact that they wanted to do something really high risk, high reward. You know, if it doesn't work out, you know I don't know. Go be a fucking something else. Go do OnlyFans. Um, the dancers were dismissed. Two dancers were fired in April and May, according to the suit. Williams lost her job April 26 days after she spoke up at a meeting in which she asserted she challenged an assertion from Lizzo that the dancers were drinking before performances. The day before, Lizzo had told the group that they would have to audition again, a move uh, that prompted what the suit described as excruciating 12-hour rehearsal. If Lizzo was dissatisfied with their performances, the suit alleges the dancers would be fired and sent home. I mean, that's how... That's, isn't that how... Isn't that how a rehearsal works? And, uh, you know. I, I don't know. I'm having trouble. I don't know if I'm missing stuff. I'm having trouble caring. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> that's <laughs> Yeah. I want to like I'm really not trying to be like that's why I asked before because I, I feel like a lot of this is incredibly sensationalized like I don't know what happened at the rehearsal the first thing I think the most the, the first thing I go to is what I think the, the just the most common sensical thing that happened they were maybe drinking or something maybe Lizzo was on her period who really cares and she made them rehearse again and if they did a bad job they would go home that's how rehearsals work again highly competitive field I'm not super empathetic to that you know we don't this to me it's similar to like athletes highly competitive field where like if you're only really going to be able to get the job if you are like the best of the best and if you aren't then you're not going to be able to get the job uh, during the rehearsal, Davis was so fearful she'd lose her job if she went to the bathroom. She soiled her pants. She was given a see-through outfit with no undergarments to finish the performance. The suit says, "I mean, my thing is, is like, I mean, if you thought you were gonna lose your job from going pee, then I mean, I imagine if you thought you were gonna lose your job from going potty, going potty in your pants would have certainly lost you your job, right?" That just sounds like she is. That sounds to me like maybe she doesn't have like the mental framework to deal with this industry. I was gonna say that. It sounds like a her problem. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to be. And again, we could be wrong, but like that In fact, prove me wrong. Yeah, well, that, you know, that makes like, sense. But this makes sense. That's why me. I struggle to talk about stuff in general, but especially like this, and give my opinion, which is often I don't care because like I wind up looking like the bitch, and like I'm <laughs> insensitive or whatever. But like, prove me wrong. Well, please. my thing is like I feel like I can understand her being upset, and that's totally fine. But now we're talking about a lawsuit. There's a difference between her being like a friend, and being like, "Oh, this was hard," and I'd be like, "Yeah, that sucks." Versus like I'm suing her, and it's like, 
if, if, if this if she was so worried that she was gonna piss her pants, I, I there's no way that none of them peed for 12 hours. My thing too is like go on with your law shit. I don't care about that, but like why stay there? Well, they ended up. Le- well, they ended up. Le- that's well. No, exactly. I don't think that they were mentally equipped for it because it's a tough industry, and that's probably one of the motivators to them doing the lawsuit because they're not going to go back to the, the industry anyway because they couldn't handle this. You know, you've had a job like that before. It was Amazon? Well, sure, but like they pr- prove that she wouldn't let you go pee pee potty. Like that's the problem. You have to like really prove that. Them making the claim. This is the problem. There's a thing called an anchor bias. When you hear something for the first time people are more likely to take that as more credible as any other perspective. So you hear them go, oh, this was really sad. And now you're like, I believe that first. And now it's going to take additional information to move you. But the most logical thing is like, that sounds like a her problem. And like, that's sad. But like, you know, if I, I would go piss if I had a piss. And if you're going to fire me over that, then fuck you. Like, and then you could sue. They fired me for taking a piss. Yeah. Right. So, um, the the suit says the dancers didn't drink. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. I I don't know. We just don't know. Like there's no there's just no way to tell. It's just a back, a back and forth. Uh, five days later, on a Lizzo tour manager fired Williams in the hotel lobby. Oh wait. Um, I want to see what that quote down there says. When Lizzo raised the issue again the following day, Williams responded saying the dancers didn't drink. The suit says the singer then allegedly offered what the the suit describes as a mocking reply. Well, if you're not, then good for y'all. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. Five days later, on April 26, Lizzo's horde manager fired Williams in the hotel lobby. The suit says the manager attributed the termination of budget cuts, said the suit, which no one else uh, no, no one else was fired. Okay. Did they hire somebody else? Because if they hired somebody else, then it wouldn't have been budget cuts. If they didn't hire someone else, then it was his budget cuts. Again, highly competitive fields. <laughs> like, I don't know, you know? They're always budget cutting, you know? Um... Rodriguez uh, complained to the manager about the decision to publicly fire Williams, a move that Lizzo repeatedly raised with the dancers during an April 27th meeting, during which she told the group that she had eyes and ears everywhere, according to the suit. Okay. Again, highly competitive field. I mean, toxic work environment because it's a highly competitive field. Like, you're for always for the cut. You know? Davis recorded the April 27th meeting because she suffered from an eye condition that sometimes let her, uh, left her disoriented in stressful situations. If Davis had an eye condition that left her disoriented in stressful situations... That's just another thing that, can, that that makes me feel like she shouldn't be a dancer. Yeah, like this unfortunately was not like within her. This wasn't like, in her genetic ability wheelhouse. to cope with. Yeah, cope with. You know, like it's just not something that she was going to be able to do. If you have an eye conditions due to severe stress, you're in a highly competitive industry. This is probably just not for her. And again, it just confirms as to the the criticism before. Well, you know, they're blacklisting themselves by coming forward. They they were never going back to anything else. She couldn't have. She had a fucking eye condition. The fact that she even got past rehearsal is actually mind blowing to me. Um, but anyway, she recorded the conversation. You're not supposed to do that. And I also don't believe this. I don't believe she recorded it because she suffered an eye condition. They signed non disclosure agreements. Ex- exactly because if it's a conversation. You don't listen with your fucking eyes, yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, maybe it has an impact on her ability to perceive anything. But, like, yeah, no, you don't listen with your eyes. I mean, like, I, maybe there's just something there. I, But I feel like this is bullshit excuse. This is, I recorded the conversation because I was upset with the way I was treated. And then, like, I blamed it on a medical condition. Um, Damn, I got myself with that one. <laughs> you fucking, you fucking dying out of that. The suit says, days later, Lizzo held an emergency meeting and had the security employees confiscate dancers' phones. Uh, the suit states, Lizzo becomes furious, hurling expletives at the group and stated that she was going around the room person by person until someone told Lizzo who made the recording, the suit says. Again, they signed NDAs. And the reason they signed is because they take a lot of money and effort into the choreography, into the outfits, which have to all be tailored to each individual, uh, to the songs themselves, uh, to the way, like, oh, there's so many different things. Like, you're not supposed to record, and you know that. So she got mad and screamed. I mean, like, I don't know. I come from a place where, like, where I used to work, where sometimes my bosses would get really pissed because something would get fucked up, and they would start screaming. And it's like, is it ideal? No, but, like, it's par for the it's a fucking job should they always treat you like that no but everybody's human and like when you have like a twenty thousand dollar accident you're gonna expect somebody to yell you know what i mean when what you're doing could cause the 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 harm to another person and you're gonna hear somebody yell when something's going on that could potentially be bad you're gonna hear somebody yell and it's like it shouldn't be happening always but like if you get yelled at every once in a while because something's fucked is going on, like wh- wh- I'm not sympathetic to that because like that's what happens at jobs sometimes. Like 
It's not ideal. Nobody should be trying to yell. But you recorded it despite having an NDA when they invested a bunch of time, effort, and energy into this whole performance. Part of that effort being having to cast people. And if you're recording shit, you should be fired. And now they have to recast you, which means they have to get a new suit. They have to teach another dancer to do the choreography. They have to do a bunch of bullshit. Um, the suit says that Davis recorded it because the, the meeting included feedback on performer's notes and her condition can make her disoriented so she can't remember stressful interactions. Then she, that sucks for her. You know, if I had a if I had a fucking disease that made it so I can't stand for more than 25 minutes, then unfortunately I'm not going to be able to perform a job that requires me to stand for three hours at a time. Like that's just life. Like if she she it sounds like that God dealt her a bad genetic hand to the job that she wanted and she wasn't able to deal with the stress of a situation, and that is what it is. Like there's only so much that you can be accommodated to when it comes to some form of a disability. Um you know what I mean? Like, if you have fucking fibromyalgia, and you, maybe you can't play competitive soccer. That doesn't make it, like, ableist. So, yeah. <clears throat> Davis acknowledged recording the meeting, saying she wanted to have a copy of Lizzo's performance notes. The suit says when Davis said she hadn't meant any harm and she deleted the video, Lizzo allegedly responded, there's nothing you can say to make me believe you. That's a perfectly reasonable response. You've already violated her trust. Miss Quigley. Miss Quigley. And Lizzo then took turns berating Miss Davis, as who says, after castigating Miss Davis, Lizzo fired Miss Davis on the spot. I don't know what castigating is. I think that means that she um, yelled at her, probably. Uh, reprimanded her. Okay, so they fired her. Whatever. Justifiable. Um, before Lizzo left the meeting, Rodriguez told her that she felt disrespected and would resign. Uh, the suit said Lizzo responded by crackling her knuckles and bawling her fist and using an expletive to tell Rodriguez she was lucky the suit states, okay, so somebody else decided that they wanted to leave. Then after she left, uh, Lizzo raised both her middle fingers and yelled a slur. What slur do you think that Lizzo would have said? A slur is just a curse, is it not? I, I don't know if it's a well, lot. I mean, when they use the word slur, that's actually a good question. I wonder what the, de the definition of a slur is. Because I, I interpret it as like a bigoted slur. Um... I, just, you know, I think that's fundamentally a slur. It's just, an, it's just a bad word. Um, we just usually use the word slur to mean a racial or, or like some kind of like a bigoted slur. I think that's a new. Oh, well, no, I think is that I think that you, people get that energy from the word slur. So the lawyer intentionally oh, yes, used that. Yes, no, no, yes. I think the lawyer intentionally used the word slur to trigger to us that she called them like the F slur or something. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. Um, she probably just said, she probably just said like, fuck you. And then maybe she did say like the N word, like with an A, she's there because they're all black. I don't know. I don't, I mean like that's allowed, I think. Right. Um, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. As a white man, the suit alleges false imprisonment against Lizzo production company because a member of her security detail allegedly forced Davis to remain in the room after the meeting ended so she could search her phone. If that's false imprisonment and they lose it, I don't care. Like, okay, maybe. I just, I personally, I can see why they did it. If it's illegal, okay, then they should be face ramifications, but it's like morally, you fucking violated your NDA. So the suit does not specify a dollar amount for damages to cover emotional distress during unpaid wages, loss of uh, earnings, and attorney's fees. The mean, in the meantime, Lizzo continues to inspire fans in a recent clip, blah, 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 blah. It's just a bunch of bullshit. Okay. So that's it. Initially. Okay. I don't, I don't think that there's much to it. If there no, is, like, fine. I don't care if Lizzo loses this lawsuit. I think she's overrated and she sucks anyways. So I really don't care. <laughs> Well, Ari Spears said that said that she has a nice face, but he got a lot of hate. That's one of the mean things, though, is that like now everybody's talking about how ugly she is, and she's she actually was getting bullied for a while for like everything, just for existing. So I feel bad for her in that regard, but I, I don't. You know, I think this is sensationalized. As long as it's not the same people that were like shitting over her now, like saying she's ugly or they whatever. Are. It is the same people. Oh, because that's annoying. But that's the thing that they're a fake fan. I think that Lizzo is so big and popular because people well, were like, big. oh, look at that big girl being big and not caring. Yeah, you think that some people just like her because they like she the, got her popular in the time of 
uh, body positivity. Of body positivity. Yeah. No. Well, part of it is like the it's the, the no thou I no what you're saying is, is basically not all of them even like her. They just said that they liked her because she was a big positive body positive woman, and that's it's, what it's fun. But, we love Lizzo. Now, We're body positive, but they don't really listen to her. Maybe they'll hear it on the, the radio, but now. It's like, oh, she's a bitch. I can call her fat now. I'm allowed to be. I'm allowed to do what I always wanted to do, which was be hateful towards her mm-hmm. for a characteristic of hers. Because we're all tribalistic pieces of shit. This was her response. These last few days have been gut wrenchingly difficult. By the way, that is a that's a um, a dog whistle to shouting me out. Um, and overwhelmingly disappointing. My work ethic, morals, and respectfulness. To- oh, one thing that we didn't read in the, the original thing was that like Miss Quigley was trying to convert people to fucking Christianity. I don't even. <laughs> she probably said like, "Oh, God oh. loves you." Well, you know, she's a listen. She's an overweight black woman. Like she's like that's like the be- those are the best like like in those black churches. Those are like the best. <laughs> she's like I love it. Like she's loud. La- she's like right, good. She's moving sounds- on. They're just the most expressive. Okay. Is that racist? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought it was. I thought it was honoring, because I'm saying that they did. Is that? Am I ignorant? Yes. Some people would call me ignorant. I'm not. I don't get the joke. Okay. Anyway, we should probably move on. Uh, my wife is 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 policing me, so. I did see one TikTok. I don't okay. care what Lizzo had to say. I did see one TikTok that I found interesting. Um because and i don't know the validity of it but this girl was saying how like she like signed up to be like a she auditioned to be like a dancer for lizzo and then she ultimately like made the choice not to based on the um contract because it said in the contract that basically like whatever you create while you're working for lizzo lizzo ultimately owns okay and so this Just girl don't create anything. Well, this girl, like, <laughs> made, had, like, previously made, like, she's a singer, made a music video and blah, blah, blah. And basically, she just showed how Lizzo, like, copied her. The next, like, a video that came out that Lizzo made was very similar to a music video that this girl had. Okay. Well, yeah, then don't. don't that's a good example. If you don't like the contract, don't sign it. I wonder why they do it. I wonder if it's because they feel like there would be some kind of an inspiration there or if it's it's trying to be worried about you watching something lizzo does because oh, how do we know that she didn't like look at something lizzo did and then just said that it was her you know what i mean like what we don't know it's like oh she took my idea but like what if she was just like imagine uh there was two poodles and he sang about it and all of a sudden lizzo made a song about two poodles you know it's just so much like i get it it's like i get why they'd have it in the contract but as long as you just read the contract yeah um, my work ethic, morals, respectfulness have been questioned. My character has been criticized. Usually I choose not to respond to false allegations, but they are an unbelievable, uh, as unbelievable as they sound and too outrageous not to be addressed. These sensationalized stories are coming from former employees who have already publicly admitted that they were told their behavior on tour was inappropriate and unprofessional. Well, they admitted that they were told something doesn't mean that they agree with it. Um, oh yeah. Another one of the things was that Lizzo made a comment about one of them getting fat. <clears throat> Allegedly. What do you think about that? I don't care. I mean, listen, here's the thing. First of all, we don't know. Second of all, you're a dancer. Lizzo is a Lizzo. Lizzo's job is to be a fat black woman that sings. And as long as she can do that, she makes money. Uh, your job is to be a dancer. And if like you, and listen, it doesn't matter. It, is you're it, gaining a little weight or something and that might have a negative impact. I mean, I can imagine it might make it a little difficult. So if you started to, you know, maybe you're not looking the part anymore. I mean, that is a little ironic because of the body positivity part. But then at the end of the day, if you're not able to perform your job, like whatever. I mean, I'm not like shitting and farting about it, you know. And then lastly, there's this little minute and a half segment from TMZ we're going to watch. This is the two girls. Um, unfortunately, the, the person in the middle is a guy and not a cup. Because of, of the popular video. This is the popular video, Two and a Half Men. Remember that show? When Charlie Sheen left, they, it was terrible. I don't like Ashton Kutcher that much. I like him. He's all right, but I don't know. I, I, you know he did Jackie so bad all the time. I love what he's like. I can't control the weather, Jackie. It's so funny. <laughs> we should watch that again. Let's get this going. Were these wow. demands or loud. suggestions made by Lizzo, as you say, um, were they direct where they said we i really want you to do it or was it more i'm afraid if i don't i might get fired 
Yeah, um, I think for uh, for both of us, there was like this always looming um, feeling of thinking that if you didn't do something or you didn't adhere to certain uh, suggestions or demands that your job could be in jeopardy. That, that kills their case, I feel. Because now they're just saying it felt like Lizzo would fire us if we didn't listen. Yeah. Like that Lizzo was threatening us with a firing. And then it's also like, yes, that's how a competitive job works too. If you fuck up, you get fired. That's what it comes down to. You know, have fun with her and, you know, um, go along with like what she was doing and, you know, be down for anything that they were they were favored. They were hired for more shows. They were invited on, you know, like private jets and and to do cool things and, you know, could See, hang out with her. See, this is what I don't understand. That's what I was saying earlier. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, the people that are down to hang out are going to fucking hang out more. Why wouldn't the why wouldn't she want to hang out with them more? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. When I'm talking about it before, before I'm coming from like a work perspective of like a bus company where like you shouldn't be favoring your friends. No, but that's the but thing. I'm even talking about that as a BIS and it's not it's, I'm not thinking of it as favoring. I work with a tremendous amount of DSPs. Yeah. There's DSPs that I speak with and spend time with. Yeah. And I like them more. Yeah. Because I speak with them and spend time with them. Right, more. but like would you So if something were to come up, I'm more likely to say, Hey, this person should have this opportunity. That I agree with. Than the other one. What's the difference? Well, no, that I agree with. But what's the difference? The difference is specifically that's why I try to clarify before with would you fire them if they weren't your friend after you've already hired them? There's a difference to me between favoring somebody because you become friends with them and you're more uh, aligned with them and you feel like you share characteristics with them that would be positive for a workflow because you would only really be friends with people at work if they're good at their job. I would be less likely to fire somebody that I liked. Right. Okay. My, 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 my question is, would you only fire them if they over specifically not hang out with you? No. That's the only question I've been asking. But that's not what happened. No, it's not, but that's what I mean. So, like, that's the one thing that I was really referring to. Like, they don't deserve to be fired just because they wouldn't hang out with Lizzo. But if these other people are, are friendly with her, they become friends. It's a conversation about nepotism. We engage with that all the time. I'd rather hire my friend for a job because I the reason I have that friend is because I think that they are reputable people. DSP is a direct support professional and a BIS is a behavior intervention specialist. Yeah. And you put out his behavioral interventions, uh, behavioral intervention specialist, honey, a bish, my bish right here. <laughs> um, no, I get that. That makes sense. Like, yeah, if your friends tell me you're more likely to hire them for like an additional position because they're. And they didn't even say that. They just no. said like hanging out, going on vacation. That's what they just yeah, said. Yeah, they just said that like, oh, it helps that like, oh, if she favored you, she'd be able to fly in her private jet. Okay. Like, well, why does that fucking matter? Like, that doesn't have anything to do with the job, right? So, um, her in, in like tropical settings, like Hawaii and stuff like that. Um, some of our coworkers, you oh, know, she's just describing a friendship. She would become friends with some of the dancers if they would hang out with her and they would, she would take them on vacation. That's different than anything to do with job security. It's, it's just like there was no line between professionalism and personal. Um, and so we had in our minds that if we weren't, you know, down for anything that we would then be ostracized later. Um, it was this unspoken thing in the camp that if you um, weren't super fun, like if you did, if you like skipped out on all of the like outings and, you know, mm -hmm. all that stuff that you wouldn't be seen in good favor um, from Lizzo and that you would then not be considered like one of the people that is like cool and down for anything. And then therefore not, not booked for, for or is yeah, none of that. I don't care about any of that. None of that makes me feel bad for them at all. Like, it just sounds like they're Lizzo. upset that they didn't go on vacation. Yeah. Like Lizzo wanted to hang out and you weren't down to hang out and she liked the other people more than you. Then that's that's not a big I don't care about that. Like, that's completely different than what I was interpreting it as before. Like, this is just not a big deal. I don't care. I wonder if the comment about their weight before was just like a joke about how like they were all going out to eat so much and like the person decided to put it in the lawsuit or something. I, I don't that's know. the end of it that's the end of it are we good I've been good